Hello and welcome to the Gaggle Mobile Challenge. And if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. With me today, of course, is co-founder of the Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, it's only a month since we were discussing um, the election victory of Keir Starmer in the UK, and we were in agreement that his the result was extraordinarily underwhelming. Um, he did worse than uh, in, in terms of uh, votes and vote share than uh, Jeremy Corbyn did in 2019. Uh, yet he was, by the peculiarities of the British system, it, it came to be a landslide. But now, as might have been predicted, uh, Starmer, who was basically preoccupied with Ukraine and dealing with the Ukraine problem and NATO and all these other things, somehow it turns out that that's not really at the top of the minds of the British people. And he is now in quite a lot of trouble at home. Um, the country is just engulfed in riots. Riots that are spreading from city to city to city. Uh, you know, there have been riots today. And uh, it, it started, the, the, this latest um, round of riots, it started with the stabbing death of uh, three little girls in a dancing class. Um, the culprit was a 17-year-old boy um, whose parents had uh, immigrated into the UK um, from Rwanda, uh, which was right away is a strange thing because Rwanda's, Rwanda had never been a, a British colony, it had never been part of the British Empire, um, but it was all part of the uh, policy of particularly of the Tony Blair government. Of course, immigration has been a huge problem in Great Britain really since the 1950s and 60s, but it really escalated under Tony Blair because Blair kind of encouraged uh, mass immigration uh, into the UK. And, and once, it, uh, once that started, it was impossible apparently to it, shut down. It was impossible to shut down. And um, Starmer, you know, in his campaign uh, in, uh, this year, had promised to uh, take a more humane approach to immigration than the Tories. Uh, so well, what, after, what does that mean? What about what, the, mean? What, yeah, about, the, what about the humanity of the of the of the population that's already there? Exactly. What about their, what about the, what about their human, humane desires and needs? That that's 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 right. That's that, you know, and that's the least uh, of uh, his and his government's uh, concerns. And so he this this after this uh, the murder of those girls, he went there to lay some flowers, and he was heckled. This is the new prime minister, and he was heckled and, and shouted at. And uh, hearts, when and minds, hearts and minds, hearts and minds. Exactly. Hearts. Yeah. Um, and prayers, and, excuse me, hearts and prayers. Okay. That's right. Exactly. And so the um, and then a rioting um, soon started. Now, initially, the, the, there was uh, wrong information. The, the rumor was that this was a, a Muslim uh, who was in the country illegally, and so they targeted uh, mosques. But you know, once once that was corrected, the rioting did not stop, and uh, and then the, the the violent response on the part of Starmer was in stark contrast to how he responded to uh, Black Lives Matter um, back in two thousand. So let me just show you the um, where he um, let's see if I can find the. Well, let, let's first of all let's see how he. Let me. Okay, let me find the. Um, this is this is it from two thousand, and. Um, it's a historic moment in the twenty twenty rather. Racial equality, the growing resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement after the cling of George Floyd coupled with the visceral impact of coronavirus on black and minority ethnic communities, I think have laid bare the structural inequality and racism that still blights our society and societies across the world. From my conversations with black community leaders in recent weeks, we've had a number of round tables. I know it's action, not words that we need now. And that's why I've personally announced a series of measures to improve the situation within the Labour Party, building on Labour's Bernie Grant um, leadership programme to increase representation 
across Labour's elected representatives, introducing an immediate audit into the diversity of Labour staff, um, including the representation of Black and Asian and minority, minority ethnic staff, and an action plan uh, and targets to follow the diversity uh, audit. But I, need, I know that we need to go further. We need the government to act on the repeated reviews. Do you have any idea what he's talking about, George? Uh, no, it, it, this is a kind of um, gibberish. Yeah. Complete, yeah, total gibberish. gibberish. But re but remember, the, the Black Lives Matter riots in the UK, although not as violent as they were in the United States, were nonetheless quite violent. And so here he's already throwing all of his sympathy um, towards the rioters. Oh, well, of course, there's the, the systemic racism and, and, and everything. So that's, that's, that's how he uh, addressed that. And now here he was speaking earlier this week at a new he held a news conference in Downing Street. A and gang of thugs got on trains and buses, went to a community that is not their own, a community grieving the most horrific tragedy, and then proceeded to throw bricks at police officers, police officers who just 24 hours earlier had been having to deal with an attack on children in their community, their community. And make no mistake, whether it's in Southport, London, or Hartlepool, these people are showing our country exactly who they are. Mosques targeted because they're mosques. Flares thrown at the statue of Winston Churchill. A Nazi sword at the cenotaph. And so I've just held a meeting with senior police and law enforcement leaders where we resolved to show who we are. A country that will not allow understandable fear to curdle into division and hate in our communities. And that will not permit under any circumstances a breakdown in law and order on our streets. Because let's be very clear about- George, can you, uh, can you pause it for a sec? Yep. Protest. It's not yeah, but what what about the hatred? The, this 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 uh, deluge uh, uh, of immigration. I mean, this shows hatred for people that never wanted to have this kind of thing. They, they exactly. didn't vote on this. I mean, I always find it really interesting. These neoliberals, these postmodernists, they talk about hate. Well, where does the hate come from? It comes from you. Okay, right. you're, you're, these people are projecting, and 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 they have the power yep. to 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 make that hatred make you feel it. Okay, that's right. That's right. I mean, In fact, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. A and lack me, of responsibility here. Yes, right. And let me show because because of what you just said. Let me just show you. There's there was a guy who um, worked for Tony Blair, and he blurted this out. He actually um, explained what the thinking was. Um, of Tony Blair when he encouraged this mass immigration. So here, here's the story. This is from 2009. This guy's name is Andrew Nether. He was a, an advisor and a speechwriter to Tony Blair. And he blurted this out. He said, Labour wanted mass immigration to make UK more cultural, multicultural, says former advisor. Labour threw open Britain's borders to mass immigration to help socially engineer a truly multicultural country, a former government advisor has revealed. So when 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 so when um, uh, 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 Tony Blair was running at the head of the tick of the Labour Party, this is this was overtly t told to the to the voters. No, of course it wasn't. Of course it wasn't. Well, that, well, it, thank that, you. That, okay. That, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That that's the point. That that this guy is. You know, you worked for um, uh, uh, Blair. It says you know we never told the people this. Because if we had, then we would have really antagonized Labour's basically working class base. That's you know, so they they were doing this precisely, deviously, secretly because they knew that this would be extremely unpopular among the people who actually traditionally voted Labour. And so here he says the huge increases in migrants over the last decade were partly due to a politically motivated attempt by ministers to radically change the country and, quote, rub the right's nose in diversity, 
That's it. That's his word. Rub the right's nose in diversity. According to Andrew Nether, a former advisor to Tony Blair, Jack Straw, and David Blunkett. He said, Labour's relaxation of controls was a deliberate plan to open up the UK to mass migration, but that ministers were nervous and reluctant to discuss such a move publicly for fear it would alienate its core working class vote. Its own constituents. Its own constituents, yeah. So they lied about this. They lied about it. All this was done in secret, but they knew what they were doing. I mean, they were, yes, there was the rub the right's nose in diversity. That has nothing to do with the right. It's because they're talking about their own voters. That's not the right. Um, but also they were importing new voters. They kind of figured, hey, we're going to bring these people in, new, new, these migrants, and they will be labor voters. So we may not be able to hold on to traditional labor voters, but we're going to get a whole bunch of new millions and millions of new voters. Oh, so demographics is destiny. Demographics is destiny. That's exactly what it was. And then he goes on. As a result, the public arguments for immigration concentrated instead on the economic benefits and need for more migrants. Critics said the revelation showed a conspiracy within the government to impose mass immigration for cynical political reasons. So they, even this argument, the economic benefits, which is untrue, but that they that but they thought, oh well, let's say if we, as long as we can put together some kind of bogus statistics showing that somehow there's a net gain of GDP if you bring in uh, migrants, that's not the reason why they uh, were bringing people in. Well, and everyone, if if the GDP, which is a ridiculous number these days, uh, okay, it's a, it increased three percent. Oh wow, that's amazing! But who, the the three percent that three percent benefited what percentage of society? Right. Exactly the, the top one percent. Okay, right. that's right. But and GDP is a, as you said, it's a meaningless number. It's just a measure of total economic activity. It doesn't it doesn't measure whether it's a beneficial economy? It's just total economic activity. So it's a meaningless. Absolutely meaningless number. And then he said uh, that um, uh, writing in the evening stand that he revealed the major shift in immigration policy came after the publication of this uh, policy paper. And then he said the final published version of the report promoted the labor market case for immigration, but unpublished versions contained additional reasons, he said. He wrote, earlier drafts I saw also included a driving political purpose that mass immigration was the way that the government was going to make the UK truly multicultural. Well, why, what, what, why is that a, um, a good in itself? Why is that a, a good outcome? I, I, I've never understood that. No, I, I think it goes back to what, what you said at the, at the beginning, that it comes from some deep-seated hatred for traditional England, tradition, the traditional society. And somehow you think it's just... It's 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 too white. It's too um, bland. Whatever. Too boring. You know, any, any all the things. Too stupid. You know, but just list all the things. Uh, and then we they, we need to spice it up with new people. I think I'm in a unique situation to ask that question because I live in a multicultural society. But it's never been the. It's never been a goal to have it. It is an organic one. Right. Okay? Right. And, and this is this is a engineered. Uh, process okay right. completely uh, at odds with any kind of democratic process or it, it, it completely it completely and what has happened this week or just showed the explosion because in the way people are now know this you brought this on and starmer was saying hey well i've only been prime minister for um one month said no way you people have been in power for decades you know, before you was Blair, who have been promoting this, and you even did this in the uh, the the election campaign. So no. you know, so oh well, this was this was all fake news. Of course, Putin has been blamed as well. I mean, just just in case you were doubting. <laughs> well, here, on this podcast, we usually have a contest how far, how uh, how quick the how long it takes to blame Russia. Okay. Yes, because apparently it was the Russia that put out the fake news that the killer. Um, was a Muslim, but but this is of course nonsense. I mean, there's a lot, lot of people were reporting this initially, but the point is that it doesn't matter because pretty soon people knew the exact uh, uh, name of the a person who did it. That this was a boy who came from Rwanda, and they asked, 
well, why was he here? Why, why exactly do we have an immigration policy that you're bringing people in and this is what they do? Uh, you know, so, you know, the, his father was a taxi driver. Okay, so why do you have an immigration policy that brings in taxi drivers? I mean, you mean taxi driving is also one of the jobs that the British, no, no, no British person will do. Oh, I'm not going to be a taxi driver. That, that's beneath me. Well, um, I mean, again, to be politically incorrect here, and we've seen this all through Europe with the, the, the desired outcome of having a multicultural society. But it doesn't bring society together. It no, on the contrary, exactly. It does exactly the opposite. That's it. That that that's right. So if we go back to um, to to uh, what um, uh, is, uh, Starmer was uh, was saying, so he's full of rage, you know. And I just want to show the the how different his language was here from the, his language of Black Lives Matter. So he's full of rage here. It's crime, violent disorder, an assault on the rule of law and the execution of justice. And so on behalf of the British people who expect their values and their security to be upheld, we will put a stop to it. Values. Thank all of the police officers. So he's going to put a stop to it. And then, and then here is um, the Home Secretary whose name is Yvette Cooper, not exactly a household name, but she's the Home Secretary. Criminal violence and disorder has no place on Britain's streets. We've been clear to the police that they have our full backing in taking the strongest possible action. Just watch the rage in her face. I mean, look, I mean, she's just barely able to control herself. You know, how this, is, you know, this, what they call the violence, this is just ordinary people um who are just protesting that you know and, and what are they protesting they're protesting the murder of three little girls i mean that's what's kind of shocked them it is this horrific murder uh and and you know and she's just filled with rage she's not filled with rage about the murder of the three little girls oh that's just a tragedy that's just oh our hearts go out to the, the to the to the victims families well it, it's community, we our hearts go out to the community well, you know, it's it, it's interesting the defense of the police here because it, they're demanding that the police um, enforce a, a policy and a reality that the majority of society wasn't in, uh, involved in 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 voting about and and right. discussing about. Okay, I mean, in that way, I kind of feel sorry for the police because they're 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 they're, they're kind of like the um uh, um. Uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority, you know, they 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 they've been in uh, charge to oppress the, the, the their own people. Okay, right. that's so, that's, I mean, that, that, that's exactly it. That's that's their their task is you know to to oppress, show show force, and they showed a lot of force. You remember the COVID, the the protests during the COVID lockdowns? They they were brutal. They set the dogs on people. Imagine they just set dogs on, and they just just but just watch the face of the the fury against perpetrators, including we're making sure that there are more prosecutors, uh, there are sufficient prison places, and also that the courts stand ready. Why don't you change the policy? <laughs> this kind of disorder needs to be clear that they will pay the price. There's been a, a call today among some cabinet ministers. What can you tell us about what was discussed and, and what further steps were potentially decided on? We are clear right across the government to the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Lord Chancellor, and for me as Home Secretary, that we will give the police all the backing that they need in the actions that they are taking in response to this, this criminal disorder and thuggery, because it has no place on Britain's streets. That's why we're ensuring that there are additional prosecutors in place this weekend. The Your head's going to explode. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, just... There's a lot of blood circulating in that yeah, head. I mean, prison isn't good enough. I mean, how about just torturing them? Let's just torture them. I mean, we've got to make, make, make them really pay for their crimes. And again, even that is exaggerated. I mean, you know, all right, so they has anyone been killed? Has anyone been seriously hurt yet? I mean, this has been wildly exaggerated about this, the, the violence, the violent crime, the thuggery. Well, where is it? They're, they're, they're protesting. They're very upset. And of course, and again, None of the they none none of no Labour person was talking like this um um in 2020 at the time of the Black Lives Matter, um, so so then so this was the the proposal that um, 
Um, where we're gonna when I can find this. Um, yeah. So this is well, Keir Stalmy, If I can get this. Yeah. So this is his proposal. So um, when he said all, all the things that he's that, that he's going to do, but you know, this is this is this is this draconian measures that he's going to introduce. Go, go back. Go back. Go back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, my eyes focus on which is. Uh, which is clearly driven by right wing hatred. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, no, you're you're right to say because he says, um, "Let me be clear: the meeting this afternoon was not about pointing the finger of blame." Oh really? Says, oh really? Says, <laughs> which is clearly driven by far right hatred. Well, we're not pointing fingers any, at anybody, but it was the far right that was to blame. <laughs> um. And um, but but all you know also all violent disorder that flares up, whatever the apparent cause or motivation, we make no distinction. Crime is crime, and then and so to that end, I can announce today the following: this meeting, we will establish a national capability. That always is very chilling. There's a national capability across police forces to tackle violent disorder. These thugs are mobile. They move from community to community, and we must have a policing response that can do the same. How does he know all this? I mean, you know, the, basically, it, the the rioting has only just started. How does he know that they, these are these are people moving um, from community to community and, and and all this? He's supposed to be a, a man of the law. He was a former director of public prosecutions. I mean, you want to basically wait a little bit until the evidence comes in. Um, but you know, he says. Shared intelligence, wider deployment of facial recognition technology. That's always that's always great. The the, the facial recognition technology, and preventive action to restrict their movements before they can even board a train. So forget about boarding a train. <laughs> you, you couldn't you couldn't board a plane. Now you can't even board a train. <laughs> uh, and then um, and then he goes on. And let me also say. To large social media companies, this is inevitable, and those who run them, violent disorder clearly whipped up online. That is also a crime. This way, that's interesting. I mean, that's a that's a crime. You know, you know, what, what, violent disorder. So anyone just saying, you know, messages that, that you don't like, that's violent disorder being whipped up. It's happening on your premises, he's, he's warning the social media companies, and the law must be upheld everywhere. That is the single most important duty of government, service rests on security, and we will take all necessary action to keep our streets safe. Mean, mean, meaning, I know the truth, and I my truth will be enforced upon you, uh, irrespective of the law. Okay, right. I see. Tony Fauci said, "I am science." Well, <laughs> here we have a prime minister saying, "I am truth." I, I am truth. I know exactly uh, what's going on. I think that's it. Um, so that that's the 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 plan. So they're going to introduce essentially a kind of a police state. They're going after the social media companies. They're going to train. You're going to f forget about boarding a train. Um, you know, because of the face, whatever this facial recognition technology, maybe they, they, they think you, I mean, I don't even know how accurate that is. I mean, you, it, you know, you've got some face somewhere in Hartlepool. I'm sorry, you're not getting on a train, but I have to go see my, uh, my sick mother. Nope. You're not getting on this train. Yeah. But see, but you know, you, you showed the home, uh, home, um, um, home minister, then you have the prime minister here, but they haven't talked about immigration. No, no, they no, won't talk about it. No. They 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 they, they uh, in a, in a uh, um, uh, obtuse way they talk about the implications of it, right. okay. And right. who are these far right right wing people? Who are they? Yeah. I mean, uh, far right people are people that disagree with you. Is exactly. That Wait, and that's right? that's exactly the question. Who are they? Who are these far right? You know, you're just sort of throwing around this this blanket uh, terms. But the fact is. That we're seeing these the protests are spreading. So so Starmer made a disastrous decision. I mean, this thing that you know we, we've just been looking at clearly hasn't hasn't had the desired effect. It didn't stop the protests. So the protests have been spreading. There's, there's, there the, we have protests now in Northern Ireland, uh, protests in Bristol, protests uh, up in the north of England, protests in London, and they are protesting about this immigration policy. 
And as Starmer, who was promising in the campaign, oh, we're going to do this humane uh, policy. What, what, what does that mean? It means you're going to keep allowing people to come into the country. And once they come into the country, very difficult to get them out. It, it's very much like the, um, um, the border deal that we heard Congress talking about earlier in the year. Um, you know, a more humane policy, right. you know, a, a better, um, uh, a better bureaucracy, you know, more judges and all. no, all you want is more money to create the process to allow even more people. Exactly. To that's, that's exactly what it means. So your humane policy, in other words, yeah, we're going to just, you know, move the asylum process, uh, you know, most, uh, get it moves more smoothly. So exactly. The, and so then they completely unable to understand just how angry uh, people are. They've been angry a long time, but this this murder of those uh, three little girls really just simply exploded because they said, "Why is this person in the country?" So yeah, okay, he was born here, but why did you let his parents in? What 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 did the net benefit of bringing them into the country? Um, it was because it's always possible that the second generation is going to be uh, you know a, a lot nastier than the original generation. I mean that was that's fairly obvious. Uh, so that, that that's why this is getting enraged. And they they have nothing other than just to threaten, to bluster, and uh, and then to blame some, you know, oh, anti-Muslim bigotry. And then, and of course, Putin, because Russia is apparently uh, fueling this. You know, well, that, that's our, our, uh, well, you know, you know, our, our go-to go uh, resort. You know, I'm far away from it. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not a witness or anything. Um, I know that when governments uh, like labor governments, uh, uh, Democrats and people like that, they, they, they're very, um, uh, they like to throw uh, around terms in a, in a very callous way, far, or far right, okay, far right, whatever that means, okay. But in the case of the UK, and we talked about this earlier in, uh, in uh, Northern Ireland, it, it tells you there's a systemic failure here. Because if it if these issues are not democratically adjudicated, right. and then you empower the police, right. I mean you're kind of cornering the population. Okay, yes. I mean yeah. what can we do? We can't yell any louder. Okay, right. we're getting poorer. We're yeah. getting more desperate. Exactly. What are you? You can't hear us yep. now. You will hear us and i am not promoting violence not at all absolutely okay? not. absolutely but i mean you've got to start listening yep no you you you're absolutely right because and we've talked about this many times because we talked about it in a different context we talked about how britain had all these problems uh with with crime um with its economy uh in in, in the, you know tanking inflation and the fact that you had these governments johnson sunak now Starmer, obsessed with Ukraine. You know, like you, you've got so many problems on your own doorstep. You know, you've got, and again, the National Health Service that clearly isn't working because, again, the population through immigration has expanded so greatly that it's just simply overwhelming the National Health Service. So all of these things going on, and you're preoccupying yourself with Ukraine. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're more concerned about inflation in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's debt problem, and probably um, asylum seekers from Ukraine in the UK. Those are your top priorities. Yes, yes. that's right. That's that's right. Um, and, 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 that's and, and all and also, I mean, and, and these things do dovetail. They do dovetail here. Is that so? They have to, they're looking for more money to send to Ukraine. Well, what about basic services in the UK? Right. I mean, that's that's an obvious insult. OK, you don't even have to be politically mature or politically active. Or like, but when you, you know, you're watching, you know, the BBC, you know, and, and there's crime in your neighborhood. There, you know, there are rampages out there. And all you hear is the newsreader saying, you know, uh, the, the glories of uh, Zelensky. That right. you don't have to be politically, politically literate to be right. angry about that. Right. Yeah, no, it, it, exactly, exactly. And the fact that all they can do is start sort of blaming, just on over the, the violent. The no thugs. finger pointing, but. That's right, exactly, the far right, these thugs, these criminal thugs, we're going to really send them, unleash the police on them, whatever they want to do. If you want to send the dogs after them, we'll send the dogs after them. Um, and uh, and, and that, that's their resort. And they're saying, but you're not addressing this problem, this immigration problem that has been a, a sore point for years 
I mean, it, 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 it triggered Brexit. You haven't even learned that. That was Brexit. It, it was <laughs> that uh, uh, it, it led. That was the, the, the most important factor in the British deciding to leave uh, Brexit. Probably if Angela Merkel hadn't idiotically opened the, the gates uh, to migrants, it, it wouldn't have happened. And so he, even as you know, you think of Starmer, he's elected prime minister and he hasn't learned anything. You know, it's like, you know, you, 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 got, you went through all of that and you're still mouthing these uh, r ridiculous uh, cliches uh, and he's not, he hasn't understood the, this part of your know, anger. And the fact that the response of the British people has been to, to Starmer and Yvette Cooper has to be more protests, more riots, just shows that how tone deaf they are. But I, I do hope they're going to have some, you know, another phone call with Zelensky tomorrow, you know, to, to, to chew over the, the really important uh, issues. Yeah, but, see, but, this, is, but this, this is how these people work. I mean, in, you know, we, often, and I think George and I have to start thinking more, um, um, more sophisticated when we throw left and right around, because it's pretty much a dead distinction, because we talk about est establishments and people that... Uh, do, are the donors to it and are the beneficiaries of it. Um, but isn't it really interesting is that their first reaction is more force. Yes. That, that, that's it, okay? They right. always do. Why? Because they're protecting their interests. I mean, how, how many migrant workers work, work at 10 Downing Street? <laughs> I'd be kind of curious, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes, that's it. And, that's and, right. and again, I, I, I feel like it's necessary to say this, unfortunately. I'm not against people trying to get a better life. I am not, okay? But there's a lot, there's a lot of variables involved in, in pursuing a goal like that. Number one, if your own people are happy and prosperous, then you have a healthy society that may absorb some people that are are, are desirable, um, um, a vetted. Yes, okay. I, I get that, okay? But you just... We want a multicultural society. That, that isn't good enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but, but again, you know, say, yeah, people who want a better life. Yeah, but you can't just go into somebody else's That's country. Right. You know, it's That's like right saying, point. you know, you know, I'd like to go into to somebody else, a rich person's home, because if I go there, I'll have nicer, com more comfortable rooms to sleep in. The food is better. Uh, probably some good drinks as well. So I, I think I'll move in there. And you can't do that. Uh, and and, and so otherwise, well, 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 actually, they, you know, George, eight, eight actually, they people. have done that. They have done that. Right. OK, but not in the, the elites. You, know, you can't go to a, an elite mansion, but right. you can go to a middle class uh, That's neighborhood. Right. That's right. That, and start uh, squatting or whatever you do. OK, no, they've done. They've agreed to that, but just That's not them. Not, not, no. not exactly. You, know, you dump them on other people and then yeah, you're going to have to put up with that. No, that, because we don't. I mean, the people who are living in Kensington and Knightsbridge, they they don't really see migrants other than come in, you know, do some gardening or you know clean clean clothes or clean the uh, the flats because they, that's not immigrants are not going to live in Kensington and Knightsbridge and Belgravia. They go and live, go and move into working class areas. That's where and that you know they're going to dump them on there. That's where you are where where there's already a problem of housing a problem of uh, poor social services and whatever, that's where they're going to move. So that's why, you know, yeah, that's very nice, you know. And, you know, my, my life is pretty nice. Tony Blair's life is nice. Migrants don't really touch his life. You know, he goes from nice nice house to nice house to a nice plane. They hardly touch him at all. You know, he is hardly aware of, you know, why, why are British people being so unreasonable in protesting about um, immigrants? You know, there must be, it, it must be racism. I mean, they're just incorrigibly racist and of course it's all these thugs these thugs these working class people these thugs brutes um you know really just dirty yeah, but working they, class they, people they, they never address the issues of you're right with first generation um people desperately trying to get uh, their feet on the ground to get in existence and all that but second third generation don't have those same kind of feeling they oh. feel uh, maybe a sense of entitlement or a, a sense of of anger of envy right. Right. um uh, there's a lot of that there right. there's a lot of issues in play right there but th that shows that multiculturalism is a complete yeah. utter failure it is it does and you get it you're reaching the point where you know you that you, you may well just be the country could just disintegrate in, into into distinct communities um, and then the next step is, you know, a kind of Lebanonization of Great Britain, because, you know, you're going to have, well, here's the Sikh community, 
you know, you got a lot of Sikhs there. You got, you know, here are the Hindus, here are the Muslims. Um, Where are the and... English? Go ahead. Where are the English? Yeah, exactly. Where are the English? Well, they they disappeared. Where are the you Welsh? Know. Where are the where are the Scots? That's right. Well, they, you know who cares? But see, about that's, that? but see, George, that's just the point. They're going to look at it through a completely yeah. different lens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, that you know, you're right because as far as the elites are concerned, you know, they have respect. Oh, good. Well, there's a Hindu community. Good. Well, you know, I, I I was talking to the Hindu community leaders yesterday. You're very very good people. Here's the Sikh community. Oh, we're Sikh. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Sikh. Yeah. Well, what about the English? Well, the hell with that. You know, who who cares about the English? I mean, they're just they're just all a bunch of soccer hooligans. Um, so that's that's right. So they just get marginalized in their own country, and uh, and that's really in, you know in, in the event in the end you know, it it's Le Lebanonization. And but before we get there, you know, who who knows? You know, there might even just be a civil war. You wouldn't even be able to control um, the 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 anger, uh, the the just the the feeling that this country has been taken away from us. And then we really have no no resort other than uh, to take things into. It's very interesting the hostility towards the police. You know, I I, I lived in Britain uh, when I was young. You know, the, the police used to be very popular. It was always, a, you know, the 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 British always respected their police. You know, yeah. our police are different from police anywhere. The bobbies else. without a the gun. Bobby, the bobby on the beat, exactly. They never carried a gun, and you know, they have that nice little that helmet, and um, always, you know, good evening, sir. You know, good evening, ma'am. You know, always, they were they were beloved figures no they're not not at all anymore you know they're now hated figures in uh in, in the so because because of the officious and very um uneven policing you know who who against whom do they use violence against whom don't they use violence they, they, this is all um uh self-inflicted okay and and you, the way we started out our conversation with that um, uh, white paper report. Yeah, th we 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 knew this was all done on purpose. Yeah. Okay, and and for our political benefit. Okay, yeah. not not even not not even about the lofty goal of a multicultural society, whatever that means. Okay, yeah. because in the West it is meaningless. It is yeah. actually a backdoor to um, maintain power, continue yeah. power. Yeah. Okay, exactly. it's probably the least humane thing you could do. Exactly, and ultimately. The elites uh, know that if you balkanize the, the population, well, it becomes that much easier to control them. I mean, it's like you just play them all off against um, each other. And the, the populace that you're most afraid of, which is the, your indigenous population, they gradually become marginalized. They become less and less important, and they can be more and more uh, easily coerced. Well, you're just a bunch of racists. You know, you know, you know, this is this all you know, awful people. You know, you're you're kind of stupid. You're unable to see all the great benefits that multiculturalism brings you. So we need to uh, be what very. What is the crisp. benefit, except for maybe a greater no. variety of cuisine? <laughs> that's the argument. That's all exactly. Hey, we're bringing in all kinds of exotic food. Well, that's not enough. Just you know, you have you know well, some exotic restaurant. That's well, not if enough. I eat curry, it doesn't mean you're paying identify. a heavier price for it. Well, it, if I like curry, it doesn't mean I have a. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with what I think about Indian people from India. Okay, right. I, I just like the taste. Okay, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is true you have greater cuisine, but the, I mean, the, the the that that that's not a justification to turn your uh, society upside down you know, exactly. at, at the expense of um, the people, the indigenous or the locals or whatever you want to call them. Okay, right. exactly. so. No, I, I hear that all the time, and I just think, well, you know, you can you can you can bring in someone to cook, okay? You don't have to bring in a whole community, right? No, exactly. When you you pay, you know, when you add all the downsides, you know, the fact that you've got a um, some you know nice restaurants, it's just simply that simply is isn't enough. And you well, know, George, you... today I had a stupendous, stupendous Italian lunch. But there's no Italian diaspora here, no. okay? So you can do it. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, uh, I, I think we have a few other things to talk about. We'll talk about right. them separate, or do you want to put it in? No, let's say we'll do a separate video on that. Okay. Um, I, you know, sitting down with George here, going through the news real quickly, I mean, people are talking about civil war and things like that. Now, there's a 
always, you know, online people want hits, so hyperbole is the top of their list. But, you know, I looked at a variety of news outlets. It's uh, pretty nasty. It's very okay. nasty. And the, the, perfectly the, predictable. Exactly. And the fact that it's spreading uh, from city to city, um, that shows that this is this is serious. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, if people clearly are angry and the fact that it's being directed at a new government, you know, in other words, there's no, no honeymoon period. No, we predicted it. Yeah, it predicted. We, 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 we said it would predicted. be very, very short. Okay. Exactly. And we, yeah, exactly. We predicted that Starmer will be very unpopular in no time at all. I mean, I, we definitely predicted that and you know, didn't quite think it would be within one month, but, you know, um, uh, the, the uh, dislike that Starmer inspires is, is quite, um, uh, you know, is probably quite distinctive to Starmer himself. Yeah, you just, you look at this guy and just like, I don't like him. No, no, no exactly. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, this is part of our Sunday wrap. This is a gaggle with Peter and George who are on Locals. So please go to the uh, to the gaggle.locals.com. Um, um, even though we had a couple more things to do today, we do a live stream tomorrow. And then George is in the uh, his solo mode. Uh, just to remind you, and I'll remind you uh, again on our uh, other videos here, I'm going on vacation on Tuesday, um, but I will be in country. And I don't think I'll have any problem with access to uh, the internet. So I don't think there'll be an interruption in a, our our um, joint effort here. All right, this is, okay, I already did, George, go yeah, ahead. Exactly, so Tuesday, <laughs> so Peter will, will be uh, going on vacation on Tuesday, and then I'm gonna do the, uh, the solo uh, on Tuesday, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Please join me, come with uh, comments, um, suggestions, um, ideas, uh, opinions, and then think about those two ferocious hounds, um, with you know, who, uh, who seem to have just completely dropped the ball, or at least they they think we've dropped the ball when it comes to tips. Uh, so um, if you have a few bob in your pocket, whip them out, um, dunk them into that uh, the tip jar. Maybe that will get them to show up uh, for these uh, uh, sessions, they, 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 but I, I wouldn't count on it. So we're very grateful for all of your help, friendship and support. The more we are able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can improve the technology. And I don't know, I mean, maybe, you know, one day these, I will we'll be in good fa favor again with the hounds, but I wouldn't count on it. Um, they, they, they've got a thing about me. So remember, if you like the gaggle, Please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.